So L up from the beat culture And what we have here Is a project That we created in Bitwig Bitwig is great But I want to continue this in Studio One Take advantage of this new technology called Doll Project, I believe So, I'm showing you I have audio That I bounced in place In some instance And then I still have a bunch of instruments That still exist So we're gonna see how good this doll project deal works. So I'm just curious as to how, you know what I mean? Now, obviously if I am using Bitwig plugins, you know what I mean? Bitwig plugins, stock plugins exclusive to Bitwig. I don't expect, or well, maybe, maybe Studio One will recognize that that's an EQ. Oh, you using a big, a bit with EQ, that's stock. We'll translate that information to the Studio One EQ. Maybe, maybe it will do that. I don't know. Cause like on this track, I am, you know, it's just a high pass filter on here. But that's how it's acting. Then I have this other, this uh, kick start, which which is my way of side chaining the kick. And yeah, I don't really expect it to do that. Like I have this on both my base side chain with the kick, so that the kick can punch through. I'm just, I am really really curious to see how that will work out. But um, that's how I have that. But I have guitar. I'm using the icon bass on this one. And then I have guitar rig. And there's a couple of places I'm using this. I have this guitar rig also on the piano. And then I have some of these sent out to AFX channel, as you can see. So this one is sent. Three of these are sent to, well, four of these are sent to the ROM channel which is this one. And then I have these two sent out to the very last one. So am I doing any painting? No, not really. I'm not doing much painting here. Wow. Can't believe that. I usually paint stuff. But I have arcade as well open, I think. Or maybe it's bounce down see now this is this would be interesting right here because on this one it's actually audio on this track but arcade is still an instrument that's what bitwig can do bitwig recognizes both audio and instrument on the same track so that would be interesting to see hang on let me see what is this I'll just say, relabel it. Horn synth. That's a good name, right? I think. And then this one. This one is the ukulele. This one's the string. This one is 
the 40s. Now, in theory, what I would do is actually bounce these down as as wave so that, it, you know, anytime I'm doing stuff in another DAW or sending it to somebody, that would be the best method. But it's this thing called DAW Project. So I am curious. I'm going to save this because I think that's what you have to do. You have to save the latest as soon as you make a change. And okay. So there is an option here called export doll project. And I'm going to save it here. And that was a little bit too fast. Let me do it again. Let me just make sure that that's what it's doing. I mean, it is what it's doing. Yeah, there. These are okay. This file right here. That, that did that just too fast, man. Uh, I <laughs> verify that one more time. Make sure that there's like nothing I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Like there's no other options. I do know that there's like options at the bottom sometimes that say, hey, select this. Especially in Studio One. All right, so I'm gonna load up Studio One and we're gonna see how well this works. All right, so we got Studio One up. We're gonna hit this button to open it up. And there is the extra options I was looking for. So, we're looking for DAW project, right? Right there. We're going to the folder and we're going to select this. See, it's, it's selectable. You should be able to see that. If you don't see that actual DAW project selected or selectable, you know, not grayed out, make sure you go here. And you got to open it up just like that. So, here we go, guys. Let's see what happens. Now, I wonder if it shares, like, the media folder, you know, in the same project, that's, and, that's, and that's how it's, it's working. I don't know. Because, like I say, it's saved so quickly. Usually that's not the case when you got a bunch of files and, you know. I got quite a bit of instruments, like I say, in here. Okay. That's interesting. So let's I'm gonna mute that for now. So let's verify that. So it did recognize the EQ. Well, it recognized that there is an EQ, but it didn't insert the data. Okay, so that's that. Let's see. Yep. It's all the EQ. It just recognized it was an EQ there. And then what, what about this RC here? It saved that data. Okay, so... Because those are the settings, okay? That's right. That's right. What about this? Now, this is right. I, I did select audio. But the side chain information... Because this is Studio One's way of side chaining. So it it doesn't recognize the side chain, but it does recognize that I did put that there. I don't think that's a problem, but you know. It did pick up the effects channel. Okay. 
We got the ROM on the first channel. Guitar 7 on these. So that's right. It also recognized that we have the God particle. MC. Yep, those are my settings. That is right. And I believe everything was loud because these are activated. I didn't have these activated. The TRS-1 or the OZO-10, those were deactivated. So that's probably why it was loud. Yeah, that's the reason. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Contact 7. Let's see if it, if it pulls up the instrument in the correct way. It looks like my, my volume levels are correct. You know, there are some differences I see. This here. Okay. Let's go to. Let's go to Bitwig again. I'm going to just mute. It's best that I shut everything down, to be honest with you. Just so I won't be like triggering both programs. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's the setting. Same setting. Okay. All right. Now. I am noticed that I am fighting with CPU here because I did have quite a bit of stuff in Bitwig. Like I have. Yeah, as you can see. Uh, yeah. I would imagine all of the, the guitar seven. Yeah, these are eating really nice. But let me go to my. Let me go here and just make sure that. um. Yeah, I have 1024 samples there, so it should be handling pretty well, but. I would expect some dropouts. I'm actually scared to play this. Okay, so my keyboard sound in the beginning is not there. Where did it go? So we got 10 tracks. In here. We have one, two, three, four. There's nothing here, so I don't know if it picked that up. So there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve tracks it didn't bring over. No, that's more than that, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we've got 17 tracks here. I don't know if Bitwig keeps it. Yeah, well, no, it don't keep a number of tracks. I don't, I don't see where the number... I didn't necessarily group anything. And there's nothing hitting. And it only brought over 10 tracks. So when we were starting here, let's unmute that. This, this track right here it is currently called halftime did it bring that over no it didn't bring that track over so I don't know why 
I don't know. For the time being, I'm going to deactivate the guitar tracks since it's eaten a lot. So. But let's verify everything else. I'm using the new session percussion. Missing is the piano. actually impressed with how well it retained most of the most of the information i i will say that i am i am impressed it seems like everything is exactly the way yeah it looks it it looks good it looks good it also retained some of the other information in terms of like note pressure note control i don't think i have yeah i do have sustain here so it brought over sustain information it will be interesting to see if it would bring over like variations but i didn't do any automations in here let me see this one brought over the brought over the modulation modulation here yeah that's pretty good okay i i man that's dope that's dope um i'm going to say that this is probably user error um oh you know what these are hybrids that will be why okay so the halftime arcade and horn horn synth i can i can identify okay horn synth Habit fifteen sixteen. Those are all hybrid tracks, and I don't have any of the hybrid anything. The arcade didn't come over. Okay, so all right. Let 
So if okay, because Studio One does not recognize those. You know what I'm saying? Bitwig, like I say, has the option to have either or. It, it, so if I convert this down to an audio track, then maybe these will come over. So I'm going to say convert to audio track. This one is good. Like any, any of these that I am... Put an audio on this one is also a hybrid but it's got audio here so let's just convert this down to an audio track right so then my hit will come through this one it's okay because it's straight midi so i don't have to worry about that one let's see this one was audio so let's convert that to audio. This one is audio as well. Convert that to audio. And it's just converting the track. It's not, I'm not doing anything because it's already audio. You know what I mean? So it's just track conversion. So we make those. This one. Now, now I'm kind of confused because this is just MIDI. So how come it didn't bring that over? Now this one is audio. So I'll just convert it to audio. This one is interesting. Is there I should have a track that says arcade? Unless I overlooked it. Um okay, string forty. It, yeah that's that's interesting okay so the tempo is 152 so it brought over that it brought over the 4-4 timing because that's the timing okay I want to say let's try this again so let's just make sure we clean up everything so okay e okay now, now i'm realizing what's going on here even though this is just midi the track is is calling for a hybrid like this is the emblem right here it's got a hybrid emblem if it's going to be straight midi track then it should look like this with just the keyboard Okay, so I'm realizing that. All right. So I need to make up my mind. Convert to instrument track, right? Because that's what it's doing, I think. Okay. So... This one's the same thing. I'll just convert this to instrument track. Okay. That makes sense. So when you're doing this, you have to make sure that your track is either instrument or audio. And for the sake of it, I'm going to delete this track right here because I'm not using that first one. All right, go ahead and save it. And then we can export this down again. And we'll just call this Two. All right. So we're going to go back to the beginning. And we're going to import that one and see if we have better luck this time. So 
So we're going for this one. Say show options. Actually, I, I'm I'm guessing because I've already selected it, you know, in here, it will highlight. Yeah. Well, let me see. just trying to see if, if 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 i go for anything else yeah so you can't go for anything else you have to you have to make sure that you're on doll project which makes sense let's open that okay i obviously selected the wrong one sorry guys let's do that again Let's go for this one. Now I was thinking. While it's doing that. I want to see. Like how is it reading the. The, the media files. Okay, first. Let's mute that. It's doing the same thing. Let's deactivate those there. I want to verify like how it's reading these those files. Let me go here and let me go to the Okay, so So in Bitwig I don't see um, I don't see where the wave files are. That's interesting. That man is doing some stuff on the background. I don't know. That's interesting. So if I go to pool, it actually has those. Okay. Wow. All right. So. Let's unmute this and see. Oh, first of all. All right. That's better. So I brought in 17 tracks. And this should be everything. I'm going to just hit this button right here. Yeah, 
that section right there at 41. Okay, what's going on right there? Let's see. Okay, so the audio three, I want to say because it's looping like that, it's not carrying. It's okay. So audio doesn't, it doesn't read the loop. But for the one that's labeled arcade, that is interesting to me because that this right here is a loop is looping but this one now i don't really get that so at 41 is is loop i just have it looping you know what i mean but and this is audio as well they are both audio so from 17 to th to 41, the arcade is looping, but this one is not, which is not a big deal because I can always do this, but we just, we just trying to see why it didn't bring that over like that you know i mean that's fine i could you know what i mean i could always do that but just just imagine that this was a bigger session a bigger a bigger file and if Bigwig is not, you know, bringing over everything that can. <laughs> you have to sit here and verify everything, pretty much. Make sure everything is, is good. And you're supposed to do that anyway. Make sure that you got everything. Everything sounds right. Everything's proper. Especially when you're coming from another dog. But I must say, this is really impressive. How it brought over the instrument, the effects, the settings to the instruments and the effects it brought over the the effects channels and it's got the sins and the amount of sins i'm sending as you can see this is a little bit more it's sending negative 8.3 db this one is negative 14 db so it's bringing over that type of information which is really dope really really dope the only other method or the old method if you were coming from one dog to another you would have to export everything down as wave and you know what i mean expect exported out as stems tracked out or whatever but at that point you are exporting down as waves and then you have to go back and grab the effects on or you can bake the effects in as you you know export them down but i'm not done with this track why would i want to do that i'm still working on it but i do know about this feature and i wanted to show it to you guys so i feel like over time this will get better and you know, maybe, maybe Studio One is working on ways or will be importing a lot of the same features. Like maybe one day we'll have a hybrid track where we can have audio and MIDI on the same track so that you don't have to go in and convert your tracks if you're working in Bitwig. One of the reasons why I wanted to switch over is because I feel like the editing is superior inside of studio one as you can see 
it looks like it just looks better. And when I say looks better, not the color, the colors look fantastic, by the way, but just the way that everything looks, I can see everything is what I'm getting at. I can see my MIDI. I can see my audio inside a bit. We're currently you just are, you're just looking at blocks. And in order to see things, you have to open it up like this. But then when you do that, you get this whole section and it's sometimes hard to verify where to click because this is the automation lane right here. It's not a big deal. It's just one of those things. But I'm guessing if you have every like, yeah, well, it's, it's just one of those things I have to open it up, but I want it to be clean. You know what I mean? Like it is in Studio One. This is clean to me. And if I want to extend this, make it larger, that's fine. Because even the information inside of here is it's easier to identify that. Yeah, it's just easy, easy to identify. I could just click. If I go to automation, there's more information, but that's just it. My view inside of here is 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 much better. And like I say, just editing MIDI inside of Studio One is totally, I think, is better to me. And I'm looking at these tracks overlapping. There's definitely an overlap. And that's another thing. Um, in Bitwig, it's easy to overlap a track. Not even sure, like, what information is that on top of that? I'm going to bring that back. Anyway, I'm going to save this project. Because I think that's what I want to do. But if I go back here, saving this project to where that is, that is interesting. Where did it save to? You know what? There's a way to find out where these files are. Like I was discussing earlier, and there's a way. See if I locate, show and find it. Let's see. Oh, it didn't show. Oh, there you go. So this is the media file. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. So it saved at its default location. Like right outside the folder that I created, which is not, it's not a bad thing. It just made its own folder and it saved all of the audio information there. So that's my, my, my media. Okay. I mean, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I like it. This is really cool. Then I can go in and just clean it up as I see fit. You know, it, I, I love Bitwig, guys. It's fun creating Bitwig because of everything that you could do. You know, like the devices down here, modulation, the, 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 the crazy amount of things that I can do. Let me see. Let me verify what that sounds like in Studio One. Okay, so for my bass sound. Yeah, it's not doing because it didn't it didn't save the.
it didn't save the midi i mean the um the eq and that's the one thing that i i don't like that so right now the eq settings is not being saved now i'm wondering if it's because i'm using this type of eq versus something like this a that looks the same actually but maybe maybe the eq would have it would have came over if i used this type of eq because this one is like their newest the newer eq where you could take this and just do whatever you want and you can insert any any it feel like I can yeah <laughs> I can insert all types of okay it went up to eight so I can insert eight different nodes and put it in eight different sections this one is five and I feel like studio one is let's see one two three four yeah this is five so so yeah maybe maybe if I did that it would have brought over the EQ curve, the settings, or whatever. So that's the thing about that. Okay. Well, that was it. Ella from B Culture. Lifestyle governed by art. 